Good evening, my name is Nikki, and today we are doing a show called Meet the Candidates, brought to you by Mr. Paul Herring. Sit back and enjoy as we ask the candidates why they feel they are qualified to be in the Flint City Council. Today's interview start, starts with Mr. David Davenport. How are you tonight, Mr. Davenport? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Tell the citizens of Flint a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is David Davenport. Um, I am 45 years old. I am a member of the Flint School Board of Education. Uh, I am a single dad of two, two young boys, 1714. Um, I was a member of the United States Navy for four years. Um, I have a bachelor's degree. Well, I work on my bachelor's degree, I'm sorry. And I have an um, associate's degree in computer information technology. Um, that my bachelor's degree I'm working on uh, in computer information technology. I have a um, array of classes, finance classes, um, different classes that I've taken with the Flint Board of Education that really qualifies me for this seat. So mm -hmm. um, you don't have a person in there that's not educated and not experienced in handling um, citizens' taxpayers' dollars. Okay. And is this your first time running for Flint City Council? No, it's not. It's it's my second time running for Flint City Council. Okay. And let them know what ward you're running for. I'm running for the second ward. Um, which has been revamped um, every 10 years. The census, after the census, they re, um, relocate the wards. And right now, um, my ward stems from Clio Road all the way over um, to ML King, um, which is east. And then it goes north up to, to Pearson. And then it goes south down to Welch Boulevard. Okay. So it's, that's a nice big area. Okay, and what exactly does a Flint City Council person do? Well, a, a Flint City Council person is there to make sure that the taxpayers' dollars are um, taken care of, protected, mm -hmm. respected, um, used in the best way for the citizens um, so they can live comfortably, you know, in the city. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel about that. Okay. And what is the reason you think the city's finances are in the shape that they are in? Well, right now, what we have done in the state of Michigan, and it's not just in this city, we have not, um, we have not made it a mandatory thing that before you be, can become a city council person or over millions of dollars in any elected position, mm -hmm. you must take classes to be qualified. I mean, I can't take Ned DeWino up off the corner, uh, you know, from Good Times, <laughs> uh -huh. and put a tie on him and put him over millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, he might sell me out for some alcohol or whatever, but he knows nothing about the finances. And I do believe that we have people that's over finance dollars that don't know anything about finances. Yeah. Um, um, and and, and I, I, I'm, I do believe that they must get a, at least have a college degree, mm -hmm. some education to be able to get in and decipher what to do with those um, taxpayers' dollars. Okay. And how do you feel about the, emerg uh, the emergency manager? I feel that I did not want the emergency manager in, but he's in now. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that what we should do as citizens is just to wait until the storm blows over. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we're going through right now. And and, and like I said, we, we, we caused it on ourselves by electing the people that we did elect that uh, really didn't have the... Um, uh, uh, the, 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 how do you say it, the tenacity to really care about our taxpayers' dollars the way that they should have. And I'm going to say that because there were a lot of things that were um, voted wrong and done wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that we as a city should not be in nine wards. We as a city should be a whole city. There shouldn't be wards. Wards start separating, and then that gives other people um, less less dollars or more dollars than what the what the rest of the city should have so exactly mm -hmm. exactly are there talks of Flint's 19 million dollar deficit being reduced how are we you know do you know anything about that being taken care of I mean right now they say we're uh, uh, we're on uh, schedule for a balanced budget this year and, and that's a true blessing um, I, I, you know I there was no doubt in my mind that they would work at getting or coming around to a balanced budget it's just a, a lot of things that were uh, done negatively 
um, to get to that budget uh, balance. You know, like the selling of the Genesee Towers, where they charged um, every taxpaying citizen or homeowner dollars for the Genesee Towers, and then they turn around and sell it for a dollar. Well, I don't think that really helped us out of a whole. So <laughs> clearly, there's a lot of things that are being done by the emergency manager that needs to be addressed. And uh, I do have a problem uh, with the council at this moment because they're not informing the citizens of what's really going on. Um, what I think should have happened is when they couldn't pay Mr. Herring or uh, uh, they could not pay to have um, uh, the city council meetings broadcasted, mm -hmm. I believe that each council person should have came out of their pockets of taxpayer dollars mm -hmm. and the mayor that claims they love the city so much to to take care of that response and still educate the folk and let the folk know what is going on down there at City Hall. But right now, it's a blank. People are asking me now, why is everything rerunning? Everything's right. on rerun. Mm -hmm. I don't think that should have happened, and I'm upset with that, with council and mayor. That um, brings me to my next question, which is the pipeline. Now, that is technically supposed to help us out a little bit with our budget, right? Well, I, I do believe that the pipeline is going to help the city of Flint, but it's going to take years for it to help the city of Flint. Right now, um, as they start building, as they start bringing it in, the, um, it's it, 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 we're not going to feel uh, no, no relief of the pressure until maybe, like I said, 10 years. We're going to have to pay taxes on that pipeline, mm -hmm. and we're going to feel it, just like we're feeling the water, um, the, the, the water taxes now. Uh, I, I think it can't get nothing but worse over the next 10 years until it's paid off, and then we, then we will reap the rewards of the pipeline. Okay. So what qualifies you over the other candidates? Well, like I said, I, I mean, me, myself, personally, I have education and experience. And, 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 and not to brag on education, but like I said, you really just can't put anyone over millions of dollars and expect them, if they don't have education mm -hmm. and experience, to come out and do what is right. Because they're going to listen to John, James, and Jill, and they're going to do what they tell them to do instead of doing what they what needs to be done for the war. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's sad that we as a, um, as a state has, have not put in the precautionary measures to, um, to be able to focus and, and be able to spend those dollars properly. So how do you plan on working on getting along with the other city council members? Well, yeah, everybody say, Davenport can't get along with no one. Mm -hmm. But no, Davenport can get along with people as long as they're doing right and what's right for the people. And my goal when I get to city council will be to um, support the other wards as long as they support what I want in my ward. Um, I, I, I do have different uh, things. I want to I want to go out and get grants. I want to set up different services for the youth. I want to educate our youth. Our youth are out here struggling because they 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 don't have the education that they need. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, aside of the schools that they go to, I want to open up centers. I want to put computers in there. I want them to be able to uh, work on the computers. It, 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 if if they're dropping out of school, I want to I want to get that list from the school system, and I want to go by and I want to try to work with these young people mm -hmm. because really they um, a, a lot of them drop out because they have to be the man or the the woman at home because there's no parents at home uh, right. doing what needs to be done, mm -hmm. and that's something I would like to say to the parents: watch what you do around your children. I mean, it's very important that you watch what you do around your children. I'm not asking you not to be you, but Watch what you do around your children because your children soak it up and they take it out to the streets and that's where they wind up using it at exactly. and they don't come out as good as you did, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so uh, that's, that's another thing. Speaking of younger children, can you let them know why it is important for them to vote? Well, I, I, I sat back and I thought about this and I, I said to myself, when I was young, when I was six, seven, eight years old, I was not able to vote. How did I get where I am today? Right. It's because Dr. Martin Luther King and all these other uh, civil rights activists, they got out and they got sprayed with water hoses and they got uh, beat up and hanged, hung and whatever else to be able for me to become the person that I am. And if the younger generation does not get out and vote and support the, the baby generation coming up, they will not be where they are today. And I'm telling the young folk, that's how you got where you are today. Someone took out the time when you were a child to go vote and, and be able to get you the rights that you have. You, if you have kids, if you have nieces, nephews, whoever you love as a child, you must get out and vote so they can get where they need to be later on in life. Voting is not for you today. It's for the children of tomorrow. Exactly. Can you let our viewers know where your campaign headquarters is going to be? Well, right now my campaign headquarters is at 2301 Forest Hill Avenue. That's my home. 
my basement is set up to where um, I do have, I'm able to run campaign uh, literature out of there. Okay. And uh, my phone number is 810-874-0937 <laughs> if you would like to donate okay. to the campaign. So let us know what new and fresh ideas you have for the city. Well, the new and fresh ideas that I do have, um, basically, um, like I said, um, I would like to get these young folk up out of the streets and stop the crime. Uh, uh, crime is, is, is of the ridiculous now. I mean, it's just ridiculous. We have teenagers killing teenagers. We have teenagers dying. And I believe if we um, um, start them with a new foundation, I think that in due time, it, the crime will die down. Um, I also would like to work on the abandoned houses um, in this area. I would like to try to open up a new senior center in the second ward or uh, so the seniors will be able to come and uh, be comfortable. But clearly, if we don't get started on some of these ideas and we don't start thinking outside of the box, we've been dealing with this, with this for eight years for the present city council person and nothing has changed. It's just gotten worse. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking the, um, the voters to trust and understand I have the integrity and um, uh, to handle their dollars and they can trust me um, as far as doing things for them in the second ward. Now, you are on the school board, correct? Yes, I am. How do you feel about all of these schools closing? Well, uh, you, you know, that's a whole story in itself. Some of the schools had to close and some of them didn't. Um, uh, in the midst of the $7.5 million that has been uh, misappropriated by um, the board uh, of the majority, and I was not one that voted it, um, the $7.5 million caused a lot more schools to close, and it's going to be a rough year next year. This is why I filed a complaint with the uh, state attorney general asking him to investigate the $7.5 million in a forensic audit to where that money went to. Uh, because the rest of the board was told that there was some criminal action. We had an outside firm come in and investigate. He told us that there was criminal action done. But then you had the other board members that said, we're not going to do anything about it. We're going to wait and put in uh, parameters so the next superintendent would not do it. Mm -hmm. So to me, that means they're saying that the children must suffer for that one person mm -hmm. that definitely uh, uh, mismanaged the money. So I am upset about it and will always be upset about it until something's done about it. Okay, we're about to wrap up this interview. Is there anything else you would like to say to the citizens? Please vote for David Davenport, Flint City Council 2nd Ward, here August the 6th and November the 5th. I am the man for the job. I have the education. I have the experience. Um, you can't just put anyone over your dollars, people. Um, it's not going to work. You're going to get what you ask for. If you ask for education and experience, you shall receive it. If you ask for non-education and non-experience, you will not have it. My phone number is 810-874-0937 if there are any donations to the campaign. I thank you, and I'm looking forward to your support on August 6th and November 5th. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you, David. Well, great to see you again. You too. <laughs> we'll right. be back in a moment.